is some of my friends and uh, <laughs> colleagues said I need to beatbox or something. <laughs> I mean, I, I've just been blown away, honestly. I just want to congratulate all the fellow honorees tonight. Let's give them another round of applause. with you all to celebrate tonight. I want to thank the St. Paul Foundation, Colleen Rhodes and Rosa Shiplander in particular for their work in making this award ceremony possible. I want to thank um, also Bill and Jean Keats from the Brotherhood Inc. Board for nominating me for this award. They themselves are on the front lines fighting for racial justice. I want to thank the board members of Brotherhood Inc and the young men who are part of Brotherhood Inc. They helped motivate me to keep going and hearing their stories and the things that they go through in the community. I want to thank all my colleagues at the University of St. Thomas Law School, as well as my current law students and former law students who are present here today. I want to thank all the community members who came out, including my Facebook friends. <laughs> I also want to thank Nathaniel Kalik and Vicki Davis because when I first moved to the state of Minnesota in 2003, I felt a calling to go into civil rights work in the community and I didn't know who to call. But I had read about the work of Nathaniel Kalik when he was the president of the St. Paul NAACP. So I reached out to him and asked if he would meet with me. And when I walked in the, in the coffee shop, he was surprised. He was expecting an older white woman because of, you know, leaving being a part of my name, but he got me. And, uh, and we, we talked for about four hours. I said, tell me about the issues that are impacting the African-American community. And at the end of that conversation, I said, I want to start a civil rights clinic that begins to address these issues. And literally, the rest is history. It's a blessing to work under mentors who can see your value, and they are not discriminating against you because of your race, because of your gender, because of your age. And so them taking me under their wings has made a huge difference in helping me to learn the ropes in this work. I'd also like to thank my husband and children for all of their support, because I have a lot of late nights in the world. Finally, um, I just want to say a few words. As Justin mentioned, I am um, a woman of faith, and I do this work because of my faith. God is the one who empowers me to come back to the front lines again and again, even when I want to give up. And he sends people like you all to encourage me and others who are standing on the front lines fighting for justice, and that makes all the difference. I will say that back in November, I visited Ferguson, Missouri, and that was a life-changing experience. It was during the week of Thanksgiving. My first night in Ferguson, I was actually tear-gassed. Even though I was there as a legal observer through the National Lawyers Guild, and that was an eye-opening experience. As a scholar, I had written about the war on drugs and the militarization of our police forces. It's another thing to actually experience those issues up close and personal. So even though I had that experience of being tear gassed, one of the things that was most powerful and impactful for me to see were the young people who were right beside me being tear gassed and who after the tear gas wore off, dusted themselves off and got right back on the front lines fighting for freedom. <laughs> marching through the streets even on Thanksgiving Day. I could not believe it. After I returned back from Ferguson, I was approached by young people about being involved in our local Black Lives Matter movement, and it was a no-brainer. Prior to my trip to Ferguson, I thought that I was an activist. However, <laughs> after that experience, I realized perhaps I'm an armchair activist. <laughs> so when they approached me about shutting down the 35W, that was a no-brainer, believe it or not. And then when, we, when they talked about 
having a demonstration at the Mall of America. Again, a no-brainer. We know that Mall of America is a corporate giant in the state of Minnesota. We know that there have been issues with racial profiling at Mall of America. We know that it's one of the most visible places in the country. And so we decided to show up 3,000 strong, people from all walks of life, babies all the way to the elderly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 